Thanks for joining us today. Mm -hmm. uh, for people who are not yet familiar with your work, can you tell us about uh, yourself and Wajadai Games? Oh, sure. Uh, well, I'm Dave Gilbert, and I have been running Wajadai since 2006, so almost 14 years, which is insane. Um, we do point and click adventure, narrative based games. I uh, mostly use an adventure game studio where we've developed in house games like Shiva, the Black Wolf series, Unavowed, Shard Light, and we've published several games like Techno Babylon, Primordia, Gemini Ru, um, Resonance. Uh, and there's a whole bunch more that I'm uh, forgetting, and I'm sure. <laughs> You've mentioned Blackwell. That was a five-game series, yep. uh, and it was quite successful at the time when you decided to stop it and uh, start working on Unavowed. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just wondering because I'm, I'm sure a lot of our users are struggling with the same question. When do you know uh, is the time to stop? What made you Ooh. decide? to stop the Black Horse series that was still successful and start with a new slate. Well, you, you say that. And the interesting thing about it is that um, the yes, it, was, it was successful. It did pretty well. But the thing is, Blackwell Legacy I wrote at the beginning of my career in like 2006. And I, by the time Blackwell Epiphany came out in 2014, I felt I was a much stronger designer, a much stronger developer. I, I knew a lot more. It was so hard for me to look at Blackwell Legacy. And, uh, I noticed that um, the the sales drop off. Like, if Blackwell, the number of Blackwell um, folks who bought Blackwell Legacy was here, then there would be a significant drop off for the rest. But for the rest, like it stayed pretty consistent. So for those who like stayed past the second game, they usually played the rest. But I couldn't deny that there was, like, that first game just isn't, wasn't strong. It just was not that strong. And no matter how good Blackwell Epiphany was, or any potential future Blackwell game could be, and I thought Blackwell Epiphany was pretty good, but most likely someone new would start with the first game and bounce off of it, because it has a lot of flaws, at least compared to my current standards. And I, it, was very, so it was very hard for me to muster up the motivation to continue with Blackwell, knowing that any Blackwell game I made would be held back because it was tied to that first game made almost a decade earlier where I wasn't that strong as a developer. Um, and so since I had, I figured it was, that was a good reason um, as much as any mm -hmm. to tie a bow on the series and end it and move on to something else that was just completely free of all expectations or previous games, things like that. Uh, Unavowed has some references to Blackwell. It takes place in the same world, okay. but you don't need to have played Blackwell to get it. I, I think that was a smart move. So, uh, still uh, talking about Unavowed, mm -hmm. it's a uh, party-based point-and-click. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not something you see very often. And, uh, not in and this particular way, I don't think so. Exactly. No. <laughs> and uh, with the player combinations, there are multiple ways that you can uh, play every mission and can play the game. Yeah. And that's a tremendous amount of effort. Do you feel that the effort is transparent to the players when they play it? Is, and do you have any data whether there are a lot of players who have come back and played with a different character, a different mission? Mm -hmm. Well, I, know, I, did, I do think it was worth it. Because uh, the one thing I really wanted, mm -hmm. um, mostly because of, uh, I don't want to blame streaming culture, but this was because <laughs> of streaming culture, um, that like, with games like ours, you, if you watch it on stream, you've basically experienced the whole game. And I kind of wanted to work around that. So I, I wanted a game that you could play multiple times and get something new out of it every single time. And I often replay those like mid-era Bioware games, you know, Knights of the Old Republic up to like the first Dragon Age or Mass Effect, you know, before EA took over. Uh, I replay those games all the time. And I really wanted that similar kind of experience. I wanted to kind of foster discussion because usually um, like on forums and chat channels and things like that, after the game's been out for a while, there's nothing new to talk about. And I found, I was very satisfied to see people talking about like the choices they made. Like, oh, I chose actors, so I got this scene. I was like, oh yeah, I, got, I, got, I took the bartender and I saw Logan. Wow, really, I gotta try that. And <laughs> I thought that was really neat. And um, I was like, oh, I took Mondana to, to Wall Street and I got this funny scene where she's drunk and someone like, and I just found that really rewarding that people compared their experiences. Yeah. So I feel it was worth it. <laughs>
Okay, so you mentioned, I think, in uh, one of your previous uh, many talks, that for Unavowed you wrote the dialogue to, mm -hmm. uh, for the characters to kind of tease out the relationship between yes. them. And uh, how does you, does, how does that method help you? And um, how do you have any shortcomings with this method, or do you think it's oh. a really proof is there? Um, I think it worked for me. Right. Everyone works differently. I. Um, found myself uh, really discovering bits about the world just by having the characters talk to each other. Um, that talk you mentioned was about how, um, I, I gave the example you know, a year or two ago of Mandana talking to Eli about how, you know, I had this very snarky conversation where she's like, why are you tapping your stuff and it's annoying. And he's like, yes, that's why I'm doing it, ha ha ha, it was horrible. Um, but then I started thinking about, okay, why, is she, why does it bother her? And why is he doing it? Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, okay, maybe mages have this history of going insane. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's interesting. Maybe he had like an ancestor who went insane. And from there, like his whole backstory kind of formed. And I found that just, you know, by, by basing, like keeping the foundation on the characters and extrapolating from there, because uh, I always kept the focus on the characters. Every world building story element, um, was extrapolated from something to do with the characters because that's how that's how I tend to relate to a lot of stories is the characters involved so it definitely helped me because that's how I personally like to work and experience stories I don't know if it would work for everybody but that's how it worked for me my next question is after Unavowed, right? You've experimented a little bit with uh, 3D, mm -hmm. and uh, did you get a lot of that experimentation now bringing it back into 3D? Uh, in some cases, it's more that like I, um, I think about the, the 3D game I was making, was that um, I wanted to kind of get that old Bioware feeling of walking around and your friends chatting around you. And I mentioned in the talk that I tried to do that with Unavowed. And it didn't quite succeed because it's just a static screen. So even though you're walking around the screen, you're not really exploring. And while the characters are talking, you still have to stand still and listen to them. And the thing about a lot of the, the 3D games that I was trying to make, I was trying to avoid doing that and just have like make the player constantly be moving and doing things. And I'm trying to take that philosophy and put it into the 2D work. It's a little more challenging just because of the kind of game it is. But that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, how I end up doing that, we'll see. I've only just started working on it about a month and a half ago. Um, so, but I know that at every moment, I think uh, I design a scene and I always try to extrapolate it out. Like, how can I make this more interesting? And, um, and I go from there. So I, I don't really have an answer yet because I'm still <laughs> figuring it out. But um, we'll see. But I know that uh, Ben, the artist, he did a lot of 3D work. Yeah. He, all his 3D art, he's taking a lot of those techniques and putting it into his 2D work. Um, like he's modeling everything in 3D and then painting over it. So he's creating these very smooth, wonderful animations. Um, and he wouldn't have been able to do that if he didn't have that background uh, working in 3D. So it's helped the art end. And it's looking interesting. It's a new look for us. Uh, we're going 1080p. We're going like 1080p by 1920. It's crazy. It's huge three times the resolution of Unavowed. So that's exciting. Yeah, yeah sounds very Still exciting. Still can't quite say what the game is yet, okay. <laughs> but we know what it's gonna look like, and that's the important thing. <laughs> okay, last question. All right. If you were to give one single piece of advice to someone that's just now oh. starting their career, oh God. what would that be? This is hard, because all my advice and all the things I learned are like 13 years out of date. <laughs> um, things are so different now, I, I guess like, <sighs> oh God, um, how I started was I started very small and I grew very organically and I see a lot of people trying to make a big epic project for their first time out and they bet the farm and even if the game does well, it does not do nearly enough as well to justify the time and money and uh, effort they spent on it. Um, I will always say if you're just starting out, keep your expectations and your uh, project manageable. It's good to pursue your dreams and if you have a dream project definitely pursue it but definitely you know don't work outside your means don't spend more than you can afford you know don't destroy yourself like try to you know think to the future as well don't think of your current project think of two or three projects beyond that uh, don't put everything into one project because you want to keep doing this for a long time 
and so you got to adjust your work accordingly.